this started everything this right here crazy how that happened just a few housekeeping rules for you under the video there are free books there are paid products stuff you'll love things that will help you out be sure to go below the video and check that out and also check out today's latest blog post with that let's get into it this is a crazy ass story because there's not one part but two parts it's a twofer and it's a crazy craigslist story something that many of you've been waiting for for a long long time when i wrote this book and put it out a lot of fun stuff happened when i was still doing craigslist some people would just call me or email me it was, and it was like hey you wrote the craigslist book i'm in atlanta would you come help us out and i was like well the book tells you how to do everything and it's just like we don't really want to do it and this little old lady in buckhead was like i want you to come help me sell some stuff i'm downsizing i don't really have anything to do i don't trust my shit bird kids her exact words I don't trust my shit bird kids and I was like and they don't even live here anyway they don't even know where I'm going and I may not tell them she was that kind of lady so I meet with her she's a hoot she's fun that's the only reason I did it because she was just hilarious she said whatever the hell was on her mind and it usually was funny go through her place she's got an older ranch and typically if you know the area what they do is They'll sell that house for anywhere from 700 to a million dollars. Then whoever buys it is going to mow it down because the house was sitting on almost three acres. That's a lot of property for that zip code. So she's coming in and out and I'm listing stuff on Craigslist. I'm selling it. I pretty much just post it up there. And then funny stuff started to happen. Because here's this woman who's about 80 something. But she is very lively for her age so she was like i said she would just say stuff then people would come in and she come in and she's like hey honey you want some tea and people were talking and she's like this is my son i'm so proud right and people be like that, 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 that that's your son <laughs> and, and she wouldn't correct anything she just let it hang and then they were all like really feel like well, yeah, she's old. I mean, just the looks on people's faces because she would just do it because she was in the last years of her life and she was really having a lot of fun with anybody and everything. And I'm just going with it. And I say, Mom, uh, you remember when we went to Africa? <laughs> there was this little couple in here, this little Asian couple. And we're in there messing with them, right? And then they mess with us because they were like, well, we're from South Africa. A lot of Asians are in Africa. Believe that shit. Because they had moved from South Africa to here. They had a pocket full of money. Because they didn't come for the sale. They came for the house. And they said, how much for house? They may have been from South Africa. But they still had that Asian hunting talk, way of talking. So this just went on for weeks. Because the thing is, when you do this kind of sale. Because I was literally there for about three weeks. I would go there most days. Not every day. And I would post stuff. Meet people. Shit really big stuff antiques chandeliers i mean it was a ranch but it was a big ass ranch had a three-car garage garage was full of stuff it had a full basement basements was full of stuff so i'm just selling stuff we're chatting she's messing with people she's telling folks her i'm son and then you know this uh these two sisters come in and then she just starts messing with them and she's like you know, my son, he's not been married in a long time. You know, that thing that happened, you know, where he spent a little time in the mental institution, but everything's just fine. These women looked at each other and they said, thank you very much. You have a nice day. And they were gone. <laughs> and she's like, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's like, no, 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 no. It was just funny. So every day was comedy. Well, one day we're messing with people. And then this guy. This big guy, he comes in with his friend. And when I said he, he's massive, he is like Lou Ferrigno big when he was the Hulk on the television show. 
big traps, arms big as my thigh, and he comes in there, and he's like truly the big, tall, silent type. He's just doing this thing. He's looking around. He doesn't say anything. The guys with him is pretty much doing all the talk. Then all of a sudden, dude just cuts me this look. I'm just like, why is dude looking at like? I mean, he's just like. And then he keeps doing this stuff. And he's walking around the house. He's going to rooms, looking at stuff. Uh, the guy he's with is buying stuff. They've got stuff stacked up. And every time he walks by, he just just keeps looking at me right now I'm feeling some kind of way cuz it's weird it's just weird it's just weird and let's get he, he doesn't really say anything he's just like you know uh, Groot from you know that movie he's just this big massive mountain of man who's just walking around but he keeps looking at, and I'm feeling a little uncomfortable I'm feeling just a little bit uncomfortable because I don't know this guy I've never seen the man tree before so his friend's wrapping up and everything, and then all of a sudden, he just looks at me, and then he just starts walking towards me real aggressive. And I mean, you know, it's just like, you know, my heart's beating because I don't know what he's going to do. And I mean, he just like rolls up, and then he gets like right in my face, and I'm looking at him, right? I, I'm a man. I'm like, you know what? I'll just kick you on your knee or something. I, I don't know, because if I have to bring your ass down, I'm going to bring your ass down. And then he just looks at me, and he's like... You that motherfucker from YouTube? Country as fuck. Good thing, I mean, he was just like, you got that channel. You used to do the storage auctions. I knew I recognized your ass. I knew I recognized your ass. And after that, he left. And then the lady was like, I guess you're famous. People, some other lady, she just kept looking at you. And she just like, I, I've seen him before, but I think she's a little shy. I think she's a little shy. And that was like the last day of the sale. We cleared everything out. And it's just funny that when you do a YouTube channel, it's amazing how many people in public who will just fucking stare at you. And it's just like, I know him, but I don't know him. And you can see him. It's like a, like, the you like your car's trying to start, it's like it's like they it's just trying to ignite, but they just can't quite complete the circuit. <laughs> But those are good times. But that flip, incidentally, made me a lot of money. And I'm talking about a lot. And it was really shocking because this was kind of in the point where I really didn't care about. I was kind of getting out of resale in terms of, you know, I did Craigslist for a few years. But I completely had moved out. And then I get this call. And she just wanted me to do it. And like I said, it was like a three-week job. Then uh, some of her friends reached out to me. And it's just really, really funny how in that industry of estate liquidation, how many people are becoming very savvy. And they're doing a lot of it themselves. They're not hiring an, an a estate company or a garage sale company. They're doing a lot of the stuff themselves and making bank. And when I said this woman had... She had all kinds of stuff. She had the little Russian nesting eggs from she got from her grandmother from like 1820. A lot of stuff. And the thing is, we didn't sell anything on eBay. Nothing. It was all on Craigslist and we had people coming from out of state. So, you know, just a little tip for you. So with that, I'll see you in the next session.